Did you know that your hormones and your period can influence your diabetes and your blood sugar levels? If you're a woman with type 2 diabetes and you're wondering if it's normal to have high blood sugar during different phases of your menstrual cycle, then this video is for you. Before we begin, can we take a minute to acknowledge that we, as women, have a more complex physiology than men? When I say complex, I don't mean bad, I just mean that a female body has this beautiful and powerful ability to create new life. And creating new life means having a menstrual cycle, right? Having a period is a sign of our fertility, and our fertility is certainly not a topic to be scared or ashamed of talking about. I felt like I couldn't make this video without mentioning this because to this day, many of us remain uncomfortable bringing this up with our friends, with our partners, or even with our doctors and healthcare professionals. But we need to talk about it because our menstrual cycle, or our period, impacts so many aspects of our lives. And we need to understand that to be able to correct any problems if any problems come up. One area that our period influences, for example, is our blood sugar levels. Here's why. Having our period every month is the result of a delicate hormonal balance. And our body's ability to regulate our blood sugar level is also the result of a delicate hormonal balance. For a menstrual cycle that involves sexual hormones like estrogen and progesterone, for diabetes or for managing your blood sugar levels, that involves hormones like insulin. Now we have to understand that inside our body, there aren't any walls that separate the different functions. I think that modern medicine has done a really good job at separating things. You know how we're told to talk to your gynecologist about your periods, but talk to your endocrinologist about your diabetes. As if they were two separate things that didn't influence each other. But guess what? Inside our body, our hormones are always talking to each other and influencing each other all the time. Hormones are the body's chemical messengers, and so they send messages to all the cells in our body all day long. So let's have a look at what that means for your blood sugar regulation during different phases of your menstrual cycle. To keep it simple, let's say that you have a regular cycle of 28 days, which means that you have your period every 28 days. Day one always refers to the first day of your period. And in this example of a 28 day cycle, the middle of your cycle, day 14, is the day of your ovulation. I'll make a future video to talk about what all that means and what a regular cycle is. But for now, I'll just say that the first half of your cycle is also the low hormone phase. And the second half of your cycle is the high hormone phase. It's during the second half of your cycle when you have higher levels of progesterone and estrogen that you can also have more trouble controlling your blood sugar levels. It's usually during this phase that your blood sugar seems higher than usual, even if you're still eating and exercising the same way as you were during the first half of your cycle. That's because these hormones increase your insulin resistance. I think that simply knowing this can be such a relief because it can be really frustrating when you don't understand why all of a sudden you're not in control of your blood sugar levels for what looks like no apparent reason. Well, your cycle can be the reason, so don't be as hard on yourself during this time. This is also the time when a lot of women go through PMS symptoms, so mood changes, appetite changes, sleep changes, anxiety, cravings, you know what I'm talking about. But now you see how our hormones can influence pretty much everything. Obviously, these effects can vary from person to person and from month to month. But the takeaway from all this is it could be a really great idea to track your cycle along with your blood sugar levels, your appetite, and your mood swings. If these issues get out of control, there are ways to combat them with lifestyle interventions and, of course, with your doctor. Please don't hesitate to discuss this with a qualified doctor. You may need to get adjustments in your medication and you may also need to get tested for different conditions. For example, a condition that's often seen among women with type 2 diabetes is one that's called PCOS. PCOS stands for Polycystic Ovarian Syndrome. PCOS and diabetes are often linked because they both mean that insulin levels are out of balance. So again, track your cycle and your blood sugar and talk to your doctor if anything comes up. Finally, I'll take another minute to talk about oral contraceptives. If you take a contraceptive pill, you may have noticed a different effect on your blood sugar levels versus when you weren't taking the pill. That's because the pill contains the same hormones, estrogen and progesterone, that worsens your body's insulin resistance, so making it harder to control your blood sugar levels. Now that's not to say you can't use the contraceptive pill if you're diabetic. There are many forms of the pill and generally speaking, they are considered safe, but you should be aware that using the pill can sometimes influence your control of blood sugar levels. So take the time to discuss that with your doctor when you're choosing the best contraceptive method for you. 
Remember that hormonal pills are not the only method. If you do start the pill, always pay extra attention to your blood sugar level, especially in the beginning or if you're changing the type of pill that you're on. Okay, I think that's it for now. We've covered a lot in this video and I hope it's been helpful. My colleagues and I, Kasana Health, help women take control and defeat type 2 diabetes, so I'll leave links in the description box below for our programs and our courses. You can also sign up to our newsletter for our weekly tips delivered straight to your inbox. Drop your questions and comments below, give us a thumbs up, and subscribe for more videos on this topic and more. Take care, I'll see you in the next one. I got this, I got this last take.